Howdy! My name is Kelly Johnson and I work with the PEER program at the College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences here at Texas A&M University. And we've put together a series of training videos to help you with your educational endeavors. So today, our two veterinarian technicians here at the vet school, Delisa Ryland and Dana Smith, are going to demonstrate the proper procedures for drawing a sterile urine sample with their assistant, Win Dixie. So we're going to talk about obtaining a cystocentesis from our patient. And a cystocentesis is the, is the method that we use to obtain urine direct, a urine sample directly from the patient's bladder. Um, we can also obtain a urine sample by walking our patient outside and catching a free catch sample. Um, but if we sample, we need to obtain it directly from the patient's bladder. We can accomplish that by either placing a urinary catheter in our patient and then obtaining a, a urine sample that way. But the most practical way if you need a sterile sample is to introduce a needle into the patient's bladder, get a sterile sample, and then submit your sterile sample to your testing facility. It feels so good. For dogs, the easiest way to obtain a cystocentesis is for them to lie on their back. You have to make sure that your strainer has a very good hold on your patient. You don't want them to wiggle if you're going to place a needle into your patient's abdomen. There are two rules of thumb that we like to follow here at the vet school. The first rule of thumb, bless you, is if you take a look at the last four mammae on your patient's abdomen, and this is true for male dogs and female dogs, and if you draw an X between those four mammae, they generally cross about two-thirds of the way back between the first set and the second set. That is a good landmark to use to place your needle into your patient's uh, bladder because they are usually gonna, the bladder is usually going to lie directly below where that area is. The second rule of thumb we like to use is if you place a little bit of alcohol on your patient's abdomen, it will generally pool right over where the, the bladder is. So if you shoot for that area, either where the X crosses, the, your two marks for your X cross, or where the alcohol pools, you're probably going to have a pretty good shot at getting, a, a, putting a needle in your bladder. You can also palpate and make sure that your patient does indeed have a full bladder before you actually obtain your urine sample. After you figure out where it is your, your landmark is going to be and how you're going, where you're going to poke your patient, you have to make sure that your patient is very still for this. When you, you use a, a longer needle than a regular needle, this is an inch and a half needle versus our inch long needles that we use for blood draws because the bladder is probably going to, to lie pretty dorsally uh, in your patient, so it's going to be further away than, than a blood vessel would be, so we need a longer needle. So we've established our landmark, and we know we want to go straight down right here. We would take our syringe and needle and put the needle all the way into our patient's abdomen right at midline. You want to go straight down. You don't want to redirect at all. Once the needle is in your patient's abdomen, you don't want to muck around with the needle because um, you may lacerate some, uh, a loop of intestine or something else that's important in your patient's abdomen. If you angle any direction at all, angle caudally toward the patient's backside. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Um, you're less likely to hit any important structures if you angle towards the, the patient's back. So once you place your needle all the way, you bury your needle all the way into the patient's abdomen. You would gently aspirate. Hopefully you've obtained urine. If you have not obtained urine at that point, you can pull your needle and syringe further up, just a little bit at a time, and aspirate on the, she can lay over, and aspirate on the needle, very gent aspirate on the plunger, very gently as you ease the needle out of the patient's abdomen. Hopefully at some point you will hit the bladder and get a urine sample. Once you have your urine sample and your syringe, you can take the needle off that you poked into your patient's abdomen, place a new needle on it because this needle has touched the surface of the patient's abdomen and we don't want surface contaminants from the patient's abdomen to get into our sterile urine sample when it goes for testing. So we can place a new fresh needle on top of this and then submit it to our laboratory so that they can determine if there is anything going on with our patient's urine. Well, we hope you enjoyed that video and on behalf of the entire peer team, we wish you the best of luck with your educational endeavors. Don't forget to check out our website at peer.tamu.edu for other training videos and free resources. Thanks again, and we hope to see you soon.